Happy New Year's at your leisure fans. This week, Chad and I joined Scott Huntsman for some jeeping in the San Rafael Swell with a Lone Peak 4x4 Club. And we may have some bloopers from throughout the year. Then, we get to visit a one-of-a-kind roadside attraction that features some of the most peculiar sculptures that you will not want to miss. Finally, your favorite dispersed camping and OHV trails may be in jeopardy of closing, but we're following one group who's going to show you how to protect it. It's all headed your way now. At your leisure is next. Happy New Year! Up. Good question, Scott. Welcome to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Rhea Rossi Booth. And I'm Chad Booth. And I'm Scott Huntsman. And somebody said Jeep and a wiki up, so I'm here. Well, it, a wiki up is either something you have when you get like an air, a little air pocket in your esophagus. That might be a wiki up, or it might be a Jeep itself. I don't know. You could get an air pocket in your Jeep. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm voting for the Jeep. <laughs> Well, we are on the Wiki Up Trail down in the San Rafael Swell, and that is what we're going to be uh, tackling today. Uh, we're with our friends from the Lone Peak Four Wheel Club. Uh, they're like regulars. Absolutely. We've been out with them many times, and we've also got our wonderful social, social media, media Kat Kennedy and her husband, and they just moved here from Florida, so they're really stoked about this trip. Honey, it's their first time. Yeah. yeah. Welcome so, to winter in Utah. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> I'm boiling out here. It's beautiful. It is wonderful. Anyway, it is our New Year's show, and we're right at the end of the year, and for those of you who've watched the show for a long time, you know that we usually, usually have a tradition of catching those things that shouldn't have happened during the year, and so here's some of them are. All right. I want you to know that I've had no chocolate yet today, so this is your chocolate free, Gina. If you think that was fun, nope, just kidding. Yeah, just put your... If you think that was fun, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm right, now he's right. She's always right. And check this place out. It is a blast. What are we doing? <laughs> nice and green, put green, pink. Nice and pink. Well, I could just take an antifreeze shower right now. Oh, it's nice. I really should not be on chocolate. I need chocolate. Well, let's get our blooper show off to the right start. But you know, we've been kind of, uh, we've been called out here because, you know, everything in the desert has a name and Scott and I were just kind of, um, we were giving you our ideas about wiki up. Yeah, but Ed, you actually do know what a wiki up is because you're like a native around here. What is it? Well, it uh, comes from an Indian name for a dwelling, like a teepee. Uh-huh. So somebody thought that's what it looks like. It it does. Yeah, yeah it does. That that's. That, so it that, isn't something that you get when you're scared. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, talk about those sort of things. Look at that in the background. Isn't that gorgeous? Joseph, Mary. Yep. And the donkey. I love Joseph, it. Joseph. Who went? Mary. The donkey. And I'm the donkey. <laughs> There's another name That's for donkey, that. too, but we won't use that one. <laughs> okay. Because you, you're, you're a cute donkey with the T down the back. <laughs> All right, now it's time for us to go and look at what one of our favorite stories is, and that would be our where to. The highways of America are full of tourist traps. Utah has some of its own, like the world's tallest coal miner and helper and hole in the rock south of Moab. But the world's largest ball of invisible twine is anything but a trap. It's the real deal. This giant ball of twine is quite the spectacle as it sticks like a mountain out of the landscape. Created from an accident involving invisible ink leaking onto a ball of twine, it's one of the many oddities to see at the Porter Sculpture Park, located just off of Interstate 90 in South Dakota. This is what happens when you stop watching reruns of Gilligan's Island. Uh -uh. And I'm probably a bit obsessive. Okay, okay, I'm very obsessive. 
and with obsession breeds creativity. At the park, you can also find the world's largest splinter, reincarnated politicians, and everything from cool and classy to cruel and nasty. If you're thinking that a touch of madness inspires these works, you'd be correct. Uh, my dog does the thinking here. I have the opposable thumb, my dog has the brains, and my dog comes up with the ideas on, he, he's a pretty smart, clever Australian Shepherd. He's blind though, so I have to take care of this. But you can't be doing, making monster bulls and horses, and this is a bit of idiot in you, or a bit of crazy. You gotta use that crazy. You know, I sit here thinking, you're, come on, I told everyone, the horses could take three years. The bull took three years. I don't know if I wanna put three years into it. Come on, 10 years. The amount of time and effort Wayne has put into the creation of these sculptures is nothing short of impressive. So it's no surprise that he's been working with steel since he was a child. I grew up in a blacksmith shop. Dad had me working for him when I was 12. And uh, uh, he had me things that he didn't want to do, that, that uh, like an antique bathtub leg, it wasn't eBay. He had to the kid, said, re re reproduce this. It went on like that. So I'm learning to do sculptures, but I'm not knowing I'm doing that. I got good at it. And the early pieces were just junk. I pulled out of my, uh, as a kid, I pulled out my dad's scrap barrel, because, you know, a, a welder was a toy to me. That went on for a long enough period of time that people uh, brought buses in, wanted to pay me to see the arts. This is on Main Street. And they said, oh, we're paying you anyway. So I could just be one of those sculpture peoples. And so I was one of, those, one of those people now. Although these sculptures require an extreme amount of work, Wayne doesn't see them for just their monetary value. The satisfaction he gets from them is derived from the experiences others have while at the park. Art is about communication. Uh, art is about, the art is communicating with people. The art is getting smiles. In 1960s, type of art called a happening. Here, we haven't abandoned that idea. Everything is a happening. This is a happening. This is art. Everything is art. Each one of these sculptures has the power to evoke intense emotions. Laughter, fright, and wonder are all inspired by the metal monsters rising up out of the ground. Next time you're traveling along I-90 in South Dakota, keep your eyes peeled for the large ball of invisible twine in the distance. But if you can't see that, then spot the bullhorns and get off at the next exit. For At Your Leisure and this week's Where To, I'm Nick Chase. Isn't it time to slow down? To enjoy the view. To get some space. And to social distance. There's no better place to be than on the trails. Visit TooilaCountyTrails.com for your next adventure. Coming down into the little valley and stuff, you can look over the whole thing. For me, I can just feel the, the stress just kind of melt away. There's so many trails to go up on and, and explore. The desert and then you've got the lake, you got the mountains. It's just a little bit of everything. It's a little piece of paradise out here. Pretty much anybody that I've brought up here, they will ask, can we come back? At Stedman's Recreation, trucks are arriving daily with back-ordered side-by-sides, ATVs, and dirt bikes. Let Stedman's Recreation help get you outside so you can explore and create memories to last a lifetime. Call or stop by Stedman's to hold your side-by-side, -side, ATV, or dirt bike with a small deposit. Yamaha, Honda, Polaris, and Beta. Plus, Stedman's has a full service department and Honda power equipment. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out here, but remember, it's only 30 miles back. This week's What's New segment is brought to you by Tunex. Winter is here. Tires, brakes, heaters, and defrost systems, we take care of it all. 
Welcome back to At Your Leisure. It's What's New Time, time for our product review. I always love introducing products from the hometown team. So today we are going to look at a new brand of electric assisted mountain bike specifically geared for hunters and uh, they are based in Ogden, Utah. So let me introduce you to the Baku line. All right, so let's take a look at some of the features on the Baku. This is their entry level line. This is called the uh, Flatlander right here. Now, this has got some great features on it. First off, quality components all the way through. We've got Tektro brakes, we've got Shimano drive, and we've got a Bafang electric assist motor in the hub. Now, on a Bafang, these are all aluminum metal geared motors. They have no plastic gears in them, so they're really durable. They can give you that extra boost that you need. Also, take a look at these pedals. Okay, these have got big open spaces in them and they've got cleats on them to hold your boot in place when you're out riding and, and clear the mud and snow. Now, one thing that I really want to point out on the, on the brakes, notice that, the, that it's actually a hydraulically powered brake. So just like a car with a hydraulic brake, you're going to get that really incredibly smooth, reliable, dependable uh, braking. So you always know what you're getting, you're getting no surprises. So your battery is upgradable. They all come with a 14 amp hour battery, but you can upgrade it to 17 or 21 so you can get that extra few miles that you need to make sure you've always got enough juice to get that power assist back to your car or the trailhead. Now, let's take a look over here. This is the mule. This is the workhorse. Notice on this one, they have basically the same quality build, but one difference. This one goes to a mid-drive uh, motor on it as opposed to being in the rear hub. And there's some real advantages to this. The power assist is able to take advantage of all the gearing, those nine gears in the back. If you've got an outdoor passion, they've got the gearing that can go with it. You can get trailers for it, you've got a fishing rod holder on this bike, or you can get panniers like this one, and you can really backpack your stuff in uh, with, a, with a rack and the panniers, which conveniently has my coat, which conveniently means it's time for us to go ride these. I am totally speechless. And as you folks have known me for 20 years, that's really hard to come by. But I'm speechless about how well this bike performs. Uh, you gotta check it out. Don't take my word for it. Arrange to go take one for a test drive. Brian, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having the passion to build a bike like this. How do we find out more? Chad, thanks. Uh, you can find us at www.baku.com. And uh, we're right here in Ogden, Utah. Um, find us on the website or, or come see us. All right. Well, we'll be back with more At Your Leisure in just a minute. And uh, you know what? You're going to have to catch me to get this back. <laughs> It's time to experience something new. Like new tech, new options, and new performance upgrades. Polaris gives you the fastest engaging all-wheel drive. The only GPS that lets you plan, track, and share. Ultra bright LED lights. And exclusive work features you can't get anywhere else. Polaris, think outside. Sick of staying home? Getting outside and exploring great open spaces is now more important than ever. Spend your summer exploring Tula Valley, where there is so much so close. Plan your escape now at TulaValley.org. The Old West is still alive in Jueb County. 
Stories of the past are hidden in the desert mountains. From relics of mining history to places of outlaw mystery, tall tales to be discovered and buried treasure to be uncovered. Juab, the key county of Utah. It's all a matter of perspective. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. Uh, we are somewhere on the other side of the blocks. Yes. Yeah. Marlon, where are we? Yeah, this is the, air, the, the section called the blocks. That's because of all these monoliths that uh, come up uh, out, of the, out of the mountains. And it's just absolutely spectacular. It really is. And I can imagine coming out here any time of the year. It's just crystal clear, beautiful air. It's gorgeous. See, Marlon is the reason we do half the Jeep trips we do because he goes out with the uh, Lone Peak Jeep Club and, the, and they go on a four wheel and then they post stuff and I follow them on social media and I go, and then I call them and say, hey, you didn't invite us. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he just says, okay, well, we'll go again, so. Yeah. Yep, 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 no problem, we love it. We come out here, I guess we've been out here three times in the last month, so. <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. So, yeah, we like it. There you go. So right now it's time for us to get back to what, yes, everybody's been waiting for, a year's worth of bloopers condensed into a minute and a half. Beautiful. Like we're in the staging lanes, get all prepared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, Terex is, Back, Mike Jorgensen, everybody. Mike Jorgensen, everybody. I thought you were going camping. I don't have time to go camping. I have to work. <laughs> All right. Okay. Get this over with. <laughs> See, this is what I live with. This is what I live with. Are you related to uh, Gina? And, yeah. <laughs> that does not make the blooper real. Nick's it. Gone. So we see him going in and we see him coming out. Whoa. Oh, I knew it. Oh, Reese. He let one away. When the boat starts turning, you're going to pull this, and the sail is going to come across the boat onto this side. Okay. You ready? <laughs> We're going to send you guys out to this week's Along the Way, sponsored by Rocky Mountain ATV. That won't work. I got hit in the head. Maybe not that tight. Oh. Hard to watch. Hell no, it wasn't. It was easy to watch. It was like, oh, to you. If you bring your Mercedes through this, Hey, to quote George Bush, I wish I hadn't have said that. And I'm really glad they didn't play all the audio to go with it. But you know what? We're having a great time today. We're on the Wiki Up Trail on the San Rafael Swell. And right behind me is a, is a rock formation called the Locomotive. And it's really cool. I say we check it out. But in the meantime, you guys go check out this week's Along the Way. Well, so we're here today in the, what's called the Trail Canyon Travel Management Area. We're outside of Kanab near the Coral Pink Sand Dunes, and this area was recently released by the BLM into their scoping period, which means there are hundreds and hundreds of miles of trails in this area that the BLM is going to analyze on whether these trails should be open, what uses can use the trails, um, if there are any trails that should be closed. And so at Blue Ribbon Coalition, we take this very seriously. We know if we don't engage and participate, we could end up losing access to this spectacular area. And so I'm here to do some trail inventory work and kind of document some of the trails in this area that we want to make sure stay open. It's really pretty easy. You just kind of tell the BLM or Forest Service what you know. and, and if, I just take the opportunity whenever I'm out off-roading to kind of explore an area and become familiar with it. So then if I see there's a travel plan that closes this road. I'll be like, oh, I, I drove that earlier this year and I can write in my comment, yeah, I, I saw a bunch of people camping along that. There's some hiking trails that take off from it. There's some neat scenic viewpoints that leads to, and you basically just say what you know about a given trail and why that's valuable to you. Um, that gives them a reason to keep it open. 
At Blue Ribbon Coalition, we fight for access for everybody. That includes off-roading, that's your dirt bikes, that's your mountain bikes, it's your uh, dispersed camping, it's your motorhomes, it's horseback, it's backcountry pilots, it's watercraft, like we have fought for everybody. And my fear is that people become complacent. A lot of people just don't know. They see, okay, there's dirt roads in the mountains and nobody realizes that those are a constant battleground over whether they'll be closed. They just assume they're roads, they're a permanent thing, just like the road in front of their house, like <laughs> the freeways they take to get around town, whatever. Like Nobody would ever imagine that they have to defend the street in front of their house from being closed. And the more I explore out here in Utah, you can't really get anywhere without roads, just such vast distances involved. And once they like make something a wilderness area, close all the roads down and stuff, you're not getting very far into that on foot unless you're prepared to do a serious backpacking trip or something. And a lot of it, nobody wants to just backpack across the open desert. So my hope is that more and more people will get involved in protecting access. The wilderness advocates were fighting hard to actually shut down dispersed camping in that area. And that surprised me because that's such a popular form of recreation. An activity like this first camping is going to have a really low impact and is probably one of the top reasons people enjoy and support a public land system to begin with. And so my concern is that those groups don't realize that they have targets on their back as well. Just being able to get away, I mean, set up a tent on the side of a road and have a break from everything and have it be free and open and accessible, I think that's at risk if we're not careful. My daughter and I had just finished a run at this place called Eagle Point. It's this really cool but kind of challenging ski resort that has a real family feel to it. She was so excited because she beat me down the run. Deja vu. I saw myself as a kid out skiing my mom. It was a big moment for me. And all of a sudden it hit me. I was making the same memories for her. Beaver County, Utah. Make it more than a vacation. Hey honey, have you seen this tire? Do you think we'll make it? Not on that thing. Don't let bad tires ruin your trip. With service stations at every location along I-15, we can get you back on the road with fast, friendly, professional service. Eagle's Landing has everything you need along the way. Even the things you didn't know you'd need. Get ready for the road at Eagle's Landing. Reason number 13 to spend the night in Duchesne County. Experience the serenity of your own Red Rock Canyon with a private fishing retreat to Falcon's Ledge Resort. Eight fishing lakes, world-class rivers, fishing guides, and plenty of room to accommodate groups of all sizes. Discover all the other reasons to spend the night in Duchesne County at uintabasin.org. Make Marysvale your hub for adventure. Nestled in the Tusher Mountains with direct access to the Paiute Trail. Explore history from Miner's Park to Butch Cassidy's Cabin, while blazing trails from mountain peaks to the shores of Otter Creek. Hey, welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. Now, we're on a part of this trail known as the Head of Simbad, and really just because of this petroglyph right back here, which was featured on National Geographic magazine back in the 60s. That's true. And of yeah. course, that is not Sinbad. <laughs> okay. Well, who well, is it? Well, no. yeah, Sinbad. Those, those, those are like uh, Fremont Indians or something like that, or right. maybe even older Indians. I'm not sure. But how did they get that well, name? Well, uh, okay, so I was looking for like a rock formation that looked like a head in a turban, uh -huh. head of Sinbad. Right. But that's not what it stands for. 
Hmm. We have found out from very authoritative sources that this is the head of the Sinbad drainage, and it was named the Sinbad area by monks who just finished reading the Spanish version of Arabian Nights when they were donkeying their way across uh, this part of the country. Of course, it makes cool. perfect sense. And so they called it head of Sinbad. Yeah. I just think it's amazing how their bodies are so long and their legs are like that big. And it's like, did you really look like that? I think no, there's no, no. an alien reference to that. Yeah. Up with the big googly eyes? Yeah. Yeah. I know. These guys are probably fun we, to party we are, with. We are talking about the Indians, not not the Arabians. Okay? No, yeah. We're, yeah. No. Or the Marks. Okay. Well, they right. got to have a Jeep, too. <laughs> for sure. There's I, a Jeep I, on I there. I keep looking for the little <laughs> vertical lines, okay. you know, the Jeep girl thing. Anyway, right now we're going to start our business at the end of the show. We'll start with next week's show. Next week, Kevin and Gina are back to show off a great day at the Great Salt Lake as they join some friends for a fun day of sailing. Then, Reese Stein is in search of one of the world's most gentlest endangered creatures as he visits Florida's Gulf Coast to show you some incredible wildlife. Finally, we're joining our friends from Eagle's Landing who are helping pay their respects to the veteran community at their new location in Avoca, Iowa by dedicating a one-of-a-kind memorial that you've got to see to believe. Now, let's take a look at our trail of the week. This week's trail is the Bridger Jack Mesa Trail, which is located in San Juan County, approximately 55 miles northwest of Landing, Utah. To get more information on this trail or any of the trails that have been completed on the Trail 360 project, visit outsiders.zone. Now let's take a look at our contest winner. Oh yeah, this week's contest winner was submitted to us on Facebook by Ed Askew. Congratulations, Ed. Looks like you're the lucky winner of a Mountain Series stove from Camp Chef. Camp Chef offers the best way to get your cooking done in the outdoors. Visit CampChef.com for more details. And it looks like you're also going to win a bonus $100 gas and gift card from our friends at Eagle's Landing, which is the best place to gas up along the I-15 corridor. It is. Be sure to call us on Monday at 801-947-8888 to claim your prize. Hey, you guys. Next week's show looks pretty cool, but... All of us up here, we think it's time to go. Yeah, I think you're right. You're sitting with the trail, boss. We better get moving. Well, that's true. Hey, uh, you know, if you want to take this trip yourself, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get here. I-70 in the middle of the state of Utah. If you're coming from the Wasatch Front, go down uh, to Green River and head to the west. If you're coming from southern Utah, go down to I-70 and head east. At exit 131, you get off, go to the north side. That's where you air down your tires and begin this adventure. Yeah, this has been a spectacular trip, and we never would have discovered it without Lone Peak 4x4 Club. These guys are amazing. They're super skilled and super fun. Now, if you want to get a waypoint list and load it into your own GPS unit, go on to the outsiders.zone and check and see if this trail is up. Uh, it may not be, but it may be. Uh, already, I don't know, but uh, if check out there, download the trails, take a preview tour, and then come out here and explore. Yeah, this is spectacular. And just remember, there's adventure around every bend. It's just up to you to get off the couch, get out there, and create your own adventure. And Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year! Woo! Who brought the confetti?